Finally left Madonna Bay after a month, a month and almost five weeks. But I did the things that I needed to do: new bottom paint, new shaft seal, new cutlass bearing, new anodes. Um, I got fuel, uh, water, groceries. I did my laundry. Got a haircut. Uh, took multiple showers. Um, so, so I'm underway again, and uh, it's nice to have a clean bum because I'm doing. I got a single reef in the main, and um, partially furled jib, and I'm still doing over five knots. into the night. It's not too bad now. I think it's come down a little bit. There's not as many um, breaking waves. Um, I think uh, the sun's setting right now. I think what the, what it was was there's a current that um, set south between uh, Lombok and um, Bali and then the wind, blo uh, wind comes from the south blows north so you got wind against the current, and um, so the seas build up in there. And as now, as I get farther north, farther away from that strait, oh, dolphins are here too. Um, awesome. Um, as I get farther away from that strait, it seems to be coming down a little bit. This is a problem I'm not used to having. I can't slow down. I can't. I'm going too fast. I'm going five and a half knots, and um, I'm going to get there too early. I'm going to get there in the night. Uh, I don't want to get into this shallow water where um, there will be those uh, bamboo fads anchored, those fish attracting devices, little bamboo shacks. I don't want to get in there at night in that area, especially going six knots. Um, I'll never be able to see them. And uh, God, it would just be terrible if I just, you know, rammed one of those things at six knots. I don't know what to do. I've got just barely any jib out. That's it. Well, at some point I'm in the night, I'm going to have to get up here and like heave to or something just to stop, just to, just to slow down. Oh, shit. It's gotten really big. It's like a wave over the top of the deck. Still doing five and a half knots. I can't seem to slow down, and you know, these huge following seas that are breaking. <laughs> I went out there, and there's a booby, a big booby bird sitting in the cockpit on the rail. It scared me. God damn it! Get off the air.
damn three of them. Okay, you guys gotta go. Oh, what a rough night. Picked up right after, uh, right after sunset. Just like they said it was going to on Windy. But I, I thought I outsmarted it and went around the, um, the place where it was going to be, get big. But I, I obviously didn't because... <laughs> uh, it got really nasty. I took a wave over the boat and um, rolled over on our side a couple times. And it didn't come down till uh, you know midnight or something. I came out of the cockpit last night. Take a look around and there was a booby sitting on the rail, right, I mean, right in the cockpit. And they're big, you know, boobies are actually a big bird. And he wouldn't leave. I mean, I was just, uh, I was uh, banging and whistling and he wouldn't leave. But here's what he left for me. I left Konge, Kongyan at um, 5.30 this morning towards Bawean. Uh, Bawean is coming up. I'm going to stay in here a couple days and relax uh, and just rest up because the next run is a 200 and, you know, 300 miles, something like that, run to uh, Bellatum. So since I've left the uh, boatyard in uh, Madonna Bay, I've discovered I've got a leaky gearbox. 
gearbox is leaking its fluid. Which is no good. So I'm trying, I'm, I'm not running it in gear. I did a little bit when I left the anchorage for just like 10 minutes to get out of the bay there. And since then I've only run it to charge the batteries in neutral. So I'm not using the gearbox. I'd like to because as we go slow, it'd be nice to sheet that sail flat and just power up the motor and go six knots, you know, to, while I'm charging the batteries. At least I could increase the speed as well. But I don't want to damage the gearbox any more than it already is. My kingdom for a whisker pole. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to have to do something. I didn't, uh, I didn't get any sleep again for the second night in a row. Two hours, maybe. Top of the hour the day before, the night before. I ain't going to cut it. I couldn't stop the banging. Uh, the wind was too light. Those seas are too rolly. I can't keep the the Genoa full, so it just flops and bangs. Um, wish I could pull it out, but I don't have a pole. I'm thinking about uh, putting the boom all the way out and running it off the end of the boom. Um, heard of people doing that. I've never done it. never tried it. I have to put a snatch block on the end of the boom or something. But I gotta do something because I can't I can't do another night like that. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna survive it. Morning of day three now. And uh, the goal was to be there tomorrow morning. <laughs> I was worried I was gonna get there too fast. I'm not going to make it tomorrow morning. I'm not going to make it tomorrow. At this point, I don't even care. I just need some sleep. There it goes. Bang, bang, bang. Crystal River, Crystal River, Crystal River. This is sailing vessel Lena May on 1-6. Do you copy? Crystal River, this is the uh, sailing vessel in front of you. I will alter so you can pass in front of me. Uh, can I have your name? Can I have your name? This is sailing vessel Lena May. Yes, I will alter to starboard and let you pass in front of me, and I'll stand by on one six. Copy, we pass port to port. My next concern is this. So I'm sailing, you can see me here on the bottom, sailing up, um, my course is right here. 
I'm going up around here to a bay up here in the northwest corner of Bellatone. See where I am right here. But right here is a shoal, a reef. See that? And outside of that is the shipping lane. So if you come up here, up this way, you're in the shipping lanes, and then go around that way, and it's substantially longer. But this is, I got my course going right through that reef, but I don't know if I trust Navionics to be that accurate, especially because here's the problem, I'm going to be approaching that in the dark <clears throat> to come around this side. If I go out this way, around the outside, that's the shipping lane, so I'll be in, you know, shipping traffic from Singapore to Jakarta. So, um, on uh, OpenCPN, it looks like this. And I just don't know. <laughs> well, I haven't slept the last two nights. I got two hours of sleep last night and an hour the night before. And now to approach this in the night, my third night, that was the sail just banging, my third night with potentially, well, if I, if I sleep this will interrupt it, certainly. So, that's a concern that I'm going to be getting up into that crap in the middle of the night. Have to navigate through that reef, which I'm not sure about on Navionics or on Open OpenCPN. I don't know if I trust either one of them enough to sail through those coral heads. But if I go up around that marker up into the shipping lane, then of course I'm into marine uh, shipping, which I am now, which I showed you on the AIS. There's two ships on there that are going to come. They're going to pass me within a mile. This one right here. And another one up in there. So I have to watch that all day today. And then navigate those hazards in the middle of the night tonight after uh, two nights with no sleep. So we'll see how that goes. That's my, my biggest challenge today is figuring out what I'm going to do here. The prudent thing obviously is to go around that marker into the shipping into the shipping lanes. But it could be just long enough to make me stay out another night though too. I just edited my course. If I go out around that buoy out into the shipping lanes it adds 12 miles to the journey. 136 to go right now on my current course. And 148 if I alter and go up around there. I've jibed and we're now heading north towards the um, that marker on the outside of the reef there it separates the shipping lane from the reef. Uh, I just I just don't know how accurate my charts are, and yeah, I'd be silly to lose the boat. To you know, why take the risk? I guess that's my point. It's 2.23 a.m. You can see I've decided to go outside this reef here, so I'm about to make my turn. I'm going to have to jibe there um, and head off, uh, looks like due west pretty much. So I'm going to wait a few minutes here and then just jibe and do the thing and do the thing. It's, 
Oh, I was finally getting some sleep, you know. It's hard after two days of no sleep. Finally get some sleep. I'm not <laughs> I'm not in the mood to <laughs> to do any sailing to tell you the truth. <laughs> just jibed. So I can still come more left, um, which will give me a better angle because I'm still going pretty much dead downwind. You can see on the um, satellite image, so island is here. The um, It just doesn't give enough detail for me to cut through the middle. I was going to cut through right down in here. But I worry that there's uh, bombies in there that I can't see on that satellite image. And then uh, Navionics, you just don't know. I mean, it's usually pretty accurate, but in Indonesia, there's a history of it missing some, missing some shoals. So... Managed to get a little bit of sleep, maybe four hours, off and on. You know, it's not four hours. It's it's uh, 37 minutes, 23 minutes, plus 14 minutes, plus 42 minutes, plus you know. But it makes all the difference. Even four hours. Uh, that's me total of seven hours in three three days though. But I'm sailing along the north coast now of Belitung. Well I mean I'm I'm past that dangerous reef anyway. I'm not yet to the island so I'm not really on the north side yet but I'm I'm getting there. I'm about thirty miles away or something. The hard passages are the ones that make it worthwhile. Because then you get to some place that's really awesome. And you wouldn't able have been able to get there without the hard passage. So you have to kind of accept that as the price of admission. This is a hard one because I, I my sleep is my sleep problems got to I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I got to fix that. Cuz that's um, you know I used to be able to sleep I crossed the Pacific. Had many uh, week long passages two week passages. Usually after 3 days I'm into a groove and maybe it would be this time too if I Spent another couple nights out. I might, I might get into the groove again. Maybe I'm getting impatient, thinking it should happen faster. shaved 
I had to wake myself up. The only way I was going to make this anchorage today is if I had a good sail today. And ever since I raised the mainsail this morning at 6 a.m., we've had wind just after the beam. I've been cruising along all day like this. Point four, six point five. A lot of times I've been over seven. This shows the the time down here that I should arrive. Four forty-eight. That's good. <clears throat> I got till about six to get in there in daylight. Sun goes down at five thirty, but it'll still be twilight till six. So, <clears throat> God, if I could just hold that speed. gonna make it well <laughs> I should say I'm gonna be here on time still gotta anchor safely in here and go through these through this all these coral heads Five thirty on day four, and <laughs> I made it. I just anchored. Old and the Nazareth. I was feeling about half past day Just need some place Where I could lay my head I said, mister, can you tell me Where a man might find a bed He just grinned and shook his head And that was all he said Take a load off that Take a load for free Take a load off that And you put that load right on me Spilled hot coffee on my crotch this morning. That sucked. <laughs> 